<laughs> okay, we'll get rolling. First off, is this anybody's cell phone? Yeah. That's yours. Sorry I didn't email, I intended to, but here you go. All right. The question was, um, is it okay to record my lectures? Yeah, totally fine. If you want to record, that's fine. And you can hold me accountable later, right, and say, but you said this. You marked it like this. Okay. Let's, thought I'd open with a scripture reading today. This, this Bible was my grandmother's. It was part of what was passed out at her funeral. So it's King James, so my apologies. I'm doing King James right now. All right, this is uh, the opening words of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the, and the, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. All right, why don't we say a quick word of prayer and then we'll jump right in. Father, thank you for these students and for this material that we're going to look at today. Father, we recognize fully that this is a contentious issue among your followers. Give us your wisdom and insight that we can divide truth from error. Give us wisdom and insight to know how to manage this material in a way that's faithful to you. We give you praise and glory. All right, so as promised, we're going to jump right into Lecture 5 material because it's going to, as you can see from the handout, this is going to be a bit of a whirlwind tour. Opening title slide, Answers in Genesis, major young earth creationist um, ministry with a very large presence in, in North America. This sign is from a church in, uh, in Australia. Anglican Church in Australia, and expresses a very common sentiment from Christian communities that evolution is a, a fiction and not supported by scientific evidence. Okay, so your objectives for today, we're going to talk about where evolutionary biology fits within the biological sciences, where this sort of theory of evolution fits how important it is to biology. Is it a minor theory, a major theory? We're going to talk about numerous examples of predictions that evolutionary theory makes, and we're going to discuss how these predictions were tested. And I'd like you to be able to at least mention two of them, just as a sample. Similarly, we're going to discuss predictions that young earth creationism makes. So you have to have a good sense of the basics of what the young earth creationist position entails, and then I would like you to be able to talk about at least two predictions that it makes, so we're trying to be fair here, predictions for evolution, predictions for young earth creationism, and then as we will do with other models later on in our second lecture, we're going to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the young earth creationist approach as a means of integrating Christian faith and biology, and we're going to critique it from scientific, a scientific point of view and also from a theological so that's what we're on about today, and here's hoping we can get through it. Okay, so first off, where does evolution fit within biology? We talked briefly about how different theories have varying levels of importance for a biological or for an area of inquiry. In the biological sciences, evolution happens to be the current unifying theory for biology. What we mean by that is it undergirds every other area of, bi of biological inquiry. It's the biggest theory that uh, biology has. We've had this unifi unifying theory for about 150 years now, since Darwin's Origin of Species in 1859, and I like to bug our uh, bug colleagues in, in physics, and, in, and uh, especially in physics, because they don't yet have a unifying theory. They have quantum field theory, they have special relativity and other quantum mechanics, 
but they know that their current theories as presented do not mesh with one another at different levels of organization. So they know that there's a fundamental disconnect and they haven't yet worked out how those things get together. The string hypothesis has been proposed as a way to bridge these two disparate theories, but now we're talking physics. But anyway, biology has had its unifying theory for about 150 years. Evolution, as you well know, is also the one theory that is specially singled out by Christians for rejection based on theological concerns. So, how are we going to approach this in this class? Well, essentially, I want you to have a good understanding of what evolutionary theory entails, so that however you fall out on it in the end, that you're making an informed choice. If you, basically, whatever model you eventually settle on, or if you decide not to settle on any of the specific models that are presented, whatever choice you make, a detailed understanding of evolution is going to help you in that choice. Okay, so, evolutionary theory 101. We talked about this in the first lecture as evolution, another way of phrasing evolutionary theory is descent with modification. So, that as organisms leave progeny in successive generations over time, that the average characteristics of those populations can change due to variation that is heritable. So basically variation exists in populations. That variation is heritable. And then this idea of natural selection. This is contrasted with artificial selection, which you're probably familiar with. Artificial selection being deliberate selection by humans on certain organisms. So for example, you could look at all the different breeds of dogs and things like that. Those different breeds are all ancestrally related. They're all dogs. But artificial selection has driven that basic organism type into different outward manifestations. So basically, artificial selection has produced these different forms of dogs that we now recognize and can be quite distinct. If you think about a Great Dane and you think about a Chihuahua, well, you might even say that's getting close to a speciation event. These are quite different. And that's based on artificial selection. Darwin's big idea was is that nature, the environment, can do that same process. That was basically his idea. So, heritable variation. The first thing, we talked about DNA as an information storage polymer in the last class. The mechanism of inheritance was a mystery to Darwin. He had no idea, and I actually just read The Origin of Species in the last few months, just for fun. So yeah, I'm 150 years behind in my reading. Um, and the section on heredity, poor Darwin didn't have a clue. Didn't have a clue, just a big muddle. And the reason for that is um, Mendel's work, which you might be familiar with at some level, crosses with pea plants. Mendel was roughly contemporaneous with Darwin, sort of 1860s, he did his work, but the two never got together, they never interacted, and Darwin was not aware of Mendel's work because it wasn't really rediscovered until about the 1900s. So at that point, or sorry, at the time Darwin put his original hypothesis together, he was aware that this was a problem. He didn't understand the mechanism of heritable variation, but the work of Mendel actually allowed that to bridge into the theory of evolution. As an aside, when Mendel's work was first being uh, applied to other organisms, it was considered for a time to be quite a threat to evolutionary theory because of the emphasis on constancy, heritability, constancy over time, things are not changing, things are heritable and persisting in the same state. That was seen for a time to be in conflict with Darwin's central thesis that there should be heritable variation. Make a long story short, you now about know about DNA code, how it has now been demonstrated to be a source both of constancy, constancy, so it's heritable, but it also allows for variation, so it allows for both. The incorporation of Mendelism into evolutionary theory, or Darwinism as it was called at that time, has since been called the Neo-Darwinian synthesis, if you've heard that term. So basically, Neo-Darwinism is the synthesis of Mendelism and Darwinism. But that's using sort of historical terms. Okay, so we've talked about 
DNA as a polymer. It, has, it acts as a template for its own replication with hydrogen bonds. We talked about this last day. 